about a game. It's a red skin. Got a good one for you today, guys. Today I am going for my first run, and then I will be giving you my first impressions on the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. Full disclosure, Adidas did not send me this shoe for review. I bought it with my own money, so I don't have anyone telling me what to do. I'm gonna be giving you my honest opinion on this Max Cushion gorgeous, very expensive, running shoe. I am a fan of Max cushioned comfortable shoes. After all, we are supposed to be running the majority of our miles at an easy pace. And I've got a feeling that I'm going to be pretty comfortable running at an easy pace in these shoes. But let's wait till I actually go for a run. Come on. Point zero seven miles or just a shade under 13 kilometers an average pace of 741 a mile which is about 446 a kilometer in adidas's new ultra boost 21. the weather was pretty ideal on my first run in these new shoes it was 61 degrees and sunny which is about 16.11 celsius okay enough about the weather enough about my run you are here for my opinion on this shoe after my first run keep this in mind I will be coming back with a full review of the Ultra Boost 21 after I have run at least 100 miles. Today's run was pretty much what I expected. It felt really good. It is a very cush ride, and that is probably something to do with all this boost. Adidas does claim that this shoe has 6% more boost than the last iteration. You can see here right in the heel, it does come up very high. It looks like a lot more than 6%. And while we're talking about the heel, there is a 30.5 millimeter stack height in the heel, 20.5 millimeters in the forefoot, giving this shoe a 10 millimeter drop. It looks a lot bigger than that, but you do step into this. This is kind of wrapped around the side, which kind of makes me wonder about the 6%. Did they just kind of push this up on the side to make it look like an enormous stack height? Either way, the shoe feels pretty good. And while there are a lot more responsive midsole foams out there now, the Boost still feels really good to run in. That's not the only increase in performance that Adidas has put into this iteration of the shoe. We have a new torsion system. Adidas calls it the LEP, which is an acronym for Linear Energy Push. And basically, it is just a, can you hear that? It's like a hard, plastic kind of H shaped thing that kind of splays out and comes up like this. What this LEP system does is create a stiffer ride. So it doesn't let the forefoot bend as much. Adidas claims that there is a 15% increase in forefoot bendiness stiffiness. So 15% stiffer, I think they're trying to say, which should result in a snappier ride. Speaking of snappier ride, during those 8.07 miles, I did throw in some strides just to pick up the pace a little to see how this shoe responded well to the higher paces. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. This shoe did respond well to picking up the pace. And I'll tell you right now, I wasn't expecting that. We're gonna get into the weight of this shoe in just a second, spoiler, it's a bit heavy. The upper is a prime knit plus and Adidas claims that it is a more precise knit. I'll leave that up to you to decide what a more precise knit actually means. It does actually feel very good around your foot. There is a good lockdown. You know with some knits, when you've run in them for a little while, they just start to feel a little looser. I know this was only one run. I only ran for an hour in my first run, but I wasn't getting any of that. You can see that it is kind of like a sock-like liner. And while I'm not always a fan of this kind of booty construction for running shoes, this felt very good. We've got these kind of plastic cages. They're pretty hard on the side and they are knit into the upper right here and the laces actually come through them on the top. And I wasn't sure when I first looked at it and saw them, but with the laces actually knit into these cages on the side, it actually created a very nice lockdown across the top of my foot. The outsole is very nice to look at because of all these gorgeous colors, but there is actually function and form. We've got continental rubber and a stretch web rubber outsole. And looking at it and seeing what I've got, the kind of wear I've got after one run, it just seems like it's gonna be a very resilient shoe. So I may as well drop a prediction in here right now. I am going to predict that you will be able to run in this shoe shoe for five to six hundred miles that sounds like a lot but there is a lot of rubber on this shoe and all that rubber and these plastic cages 
and this new lep torsion system plastic thingy in the middle they all contribute to weight and weight that is what i want to talk to you about next now on adidas's website they claim that this shoe comes in at 340 grams that is 12 ounces now while they don't say a size that that relates to it's usually men's size 9. i don't wear a men's size 9. i wear a men's size 13 in the us 12 in the uk my size comes in at a staggering 15.9 ounces or 450 grams this is an incredibly heavy shoe okay now while it is a very heavy shoe it doesn't automatically feel that heavy on your foot so as i said i did throw in some strides on my run and i was expecting it to feel a little a little laggy and it really didn't so i guess i would put that down to the new lep torsion system giving it an actual snappier ride i think it actually helped the six percent more boost i mean who knows that seems like a negligible number however the boost midsole is very comfortable to run in and this is a definite contender for a long run or a recovery shoe the heel counter is quite rigid and i don't know if you can see this on the camera let me see if i can focus on this there are little ridges right on the inside little padded ridges that kind of grip your heel and that prevents heel slip here's the downside or another downside i guess the weight is actually a downside it's actually a huge downside the price. Adidas is asking $180 for this shoe or 160 pounds in the UK. That's incredibly expensive for a shoe that excels as a recovery shoe. Don't get me wrong, it does it well. It really does feel good on your foot, but $180 just blows my mind. Of course, you'd be a fool to pay $180 for these shoes. You can find coupons online everywhere. Adidas is always telling you to sign up for their newsletter to get another 15% off. So you've always got that option if you want to take a little bit off the price. That still seems a little expensive, but anything less than $180 is going to be good. I hate to say it, but remember my review of the Sketches Max Road 4? That is what this shoe reminds me of. Now the Max Road 4 is like a year and a half old now, but you can get that on Roadrunner Sports for less than $100. One last little thing that I wanna bring up before I go, because it's not fair to mention this now, but I will follow up in my full review video after I've run 100 miles. I did have a little pinching in the middle and it hurt so much that I actually had to stop and kind of readjust the material. So here's what I think happened. I think I cinched down the laces pulling the two cages together, which actually gave a good lockdown on my foot. But I think the tongue, which is actually part of the whole liner, I think that kind of buckled in the middle because I cinched it too tight and it put a lot of pressure on the top of my foot. It went away once I kind of moved it around, but it was there. And if you're not paying attention when you tie your shoes, you may get a little discomfort on the top of your foot. But as I said, it's not really fair to talk about that now because I have only done one running it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my full review. Adidas has some pretty funny marketing gimmicks out for this shoe. They asked the question on their website, what is it like running in the Ultra Boost 21? And they answer that question by saying that it's like winning the bronze, silver, and gold all at the same time. What does that mean to you? To me, it tells me you're running alone if you're gonna win three places at the same time. All right, this next one I found pretty funny. Adidas invites you to join them in hot pursuit of the pinnacle of harmonization of weight, cushioning, and responsiveness. Now to me, that's just a mishmash of nouns that they've pulled all together. But is Adidas claiming that they have reached the pinnacle of the harmonization of cushioning, weight, and responsiveness? I would hope that at the pinnacle, the weight is a little less. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Ultra Boost 21. A pretty good shoe with a few shortcomings, but I'll let you know if those shortcomings turn into anything in the long run. Guys, let me know right in the comments if you are running in these shoes and what you think of them. As always, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. I will see you for the next one in a couple of days. Be kind, be happy, run well.